high fans of high quality entertainment. It's very humid today, but don't worry. Uh, just the first part of this video is going to be recorded on my video camera. Then the second half on my computer with uh, OBS Studio, which cuts out all of the noise. So what I'm going to do, continu continuing on from my uh, Canadian Stub Muffin channel, which was demonetized, is I'm going to choose, I'm changing it up a little bit, I'm going to choose 20 albums from my CD collection, or yeah, in total, 20 albums, but I'm going to have maybe two or three that I'm including in the 20, just to make it a bit more interesting, as you will see. So here we go, I'm going to pick one, two, yeah, I'm going to pick 18, and there's two other ones that I want included in the uh, ranking. So here we go. Okay. Here you do. So, like I said, the, the second half will be much quieter. And I might have to put choose a, another CD, but anyway, I've got Lean the Pod. <laughs> oh, Sparks, hello young lovers. Sparks, Annette. Paul McCartney, Egypt Station. Yeah, the Monkey's Greatest Hits, I might take that. I'd rather not do compilations because it's almost like cheating. Same with the Beatles, the Blue Album. The band, music from Big Pink. David Bowie, Heathen. Captain Beefheart, Trope Mask Replica. The Doors, Morrison Hotel. Elvis Costello, National Ransom. Jefferson Airplane, Volunteers. And Grand Bunk Railroad, Phoenix. So, I'm not including these, so I'm going to choose two more. Okay, Parachute by The Pretty Things and Frank Zappa, Zoot Alerts. I'll be back and it'll be much quieter. All right. Notice how much quieter it is? Uh, I do have, in case anybody's interested, that wants to, you know, cut back noise. Uh, if you have, you know, if you do videos on your computer or anywhere, I guess, I have a Blue, e Blue Yeti uh, microphone. And it, like I said, it really kills the sound. So there are 15 albums I've ranked. I thought 20 was a bit much. I don't want to work that hard. And number 15 might be a surprise for some of you, but it's my least favorite. It is Sparks, Annette, uh, their very first movie that they wrote. They even uh, are in, in it a little bit, as got, like at the beginning and uh, elsewhere. It's a very weird movie, but I did enjoy it a lot. And I love the song So Way Me Start, which they uh, performed live uh, the last two years. It was the opening song. I love that. I do like some of the songs, but I honestly never play this. I'd, I'd just rather listen to a regular Sparks album. Maybe I should play it again. <laughs> but like I said, the movie with Adam Driver, pretty strange, but... Uh, I enjoyed it. That's number 15. And number 14, I've played probably as much as uh, number 15. I've got maybe about 20 of uh, this artist's albums, and it's just, I gravitate towards my favorites for the most part. And then other ones, I just need to listen to them more. So I can't even really, this could be actually number 15, because like I said, I know it even less well. Than the Sparks album. But anybody that's a fan of 
this artist and knows this album, let me know what you think of it. It is Elvis Costello and National Rants. Number 13. I've been on uh, Grant's Rock Warehouse a couple of times talking about this band and reviewing some of their early albums. This one, when it came out, it was a big disappointment for me. But through the years, especially the last, you know, five years or so, I've kind of warmed up to it. And it is a good help. It's not a great help. It is Grand Funk Railroad Phoenix. Self-produced. Yeah, some, some really nice songs on it. Flight of the Phoenix. That rocks. Uh, Someone is really nice. Rain Keeps Falling. And of course, their hit single, Rock and Roll Soul, is great. I should rate these, right? So, no rating, because I need to listen to it more. It's not fair to, to rate it. And the same with this. This one, I would give a uh, 6.5 out of 10. 15, 14, 13. Number 12. And as always, Please remember to like the video, subscribe, and thank you to everybody that has subscribed since I lost the monetization on my other channel. I won't mention that again for a few minutes. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and leaving comments is really, really helps the channel. So 15, 14, 13, number 12. I just prefer their their fourth album. I play that when, when I want to play this band's albums, I usually play Cahoots. But music from Big Pink is great. I do enjoy it. I just haven't played it as much as Cahoots. Uh, so for now, I will give it an, an 8 out of 10 because it is a great album. Number 11, I think I like the, I always have liked this album, but I think I like it more than when it came out. Zappa, Zuda Lurs. The only song I've never been crazy about is The Torture Never Stops. But uh, even that, I, I like more than I used to. And then uh, wind up working in the gas station. Of course, instrumentals, black napkins, friendly little finger, disco boy. <laughs> Wonderful Wino. Very good album. I would give that an 8.5 out of 10. 14, 13, 12, 11. Number 10. David Bowie, Heathen. I love David Bowie. I have all of his albums, and this is a great album. Uh, Sunday. Cactus. Uh, Everything. A trip, uh, a trip on a Gemini spaceship. That is one of my favorites on this. Waiting for you. Excellent. Nine out of ten. Number nine. Uh, Glenn Calloway from the basement when we were doing our CD exchanges. And today... I I'll be uploading this, well, for members probably today. So become a member. You can see my videos sometimes a day early or at least an hour early. Um, it's Glenn Kellaway from the basement's birthday today. So happy birthday, Glenn. Yeah. So in a CD exchange, he gave me Pretty Things, a band I've always heard about but never heard. And Parachute is excellent. It was recorded at Abbey Rhodes. It's got some Beatlesque harmonies on it. It's it's just a great classic rock album. And boy, I think it, I'll I'll give this a nine out of ten still, but it's almost a ten. I believe this is number eight. I didn't know where to put this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've played it a lot 
And the very first, as I've said on my other channel, the first time I played this, no, one of their other albums I loved right away. So when I bought this, I hated it. I seriously hated it. And it stayed in my CD collection for at least two weeks, maybe three weeks. And I guess one night I was bored and I thought I would listen to it again. And I really liked it. And then the third time I played it, I loved it. <laughs> it's Ween, the pod, Glenn Kellaway's favorite band. <laughs> yeah, very weird, but I like weird sometimes. And I've just grown to really love Queen. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I didn't show you the uh, the two extra albums, but you will see them coming up. Number seven. Yeah, these are all. No, I'm still gonna st stick with nine. I think nine out of ten. So, well, yeah, nine out of ten. There's a couple songs. It can get annoying. <laughs> this is 9 out of 10 too. The Doors, Morrison, Hotel. I love all, all of the Jim Morrison and the Doors albums. Basically almost the same. They'd all be 9, nine out of 10. And this is a great one. Uh, Roadhouse Blues, of course. Especially Side 1. I really love Side 1. But Side 2 is great too. Waiting for the Sun, uh, Peace Frog, of course, Ship of Fools, Blue Sunday. Excellent. Number six. That's uh, still nine out of ten. Speaking of weird. In, in some ways, it's weirder than Ween. In some ways, it isn't. <laughs> uh, Captain Beefheart, Trope Mask Replica. Not my favorite Captain Beefheart album, but I still love it. Uh, some of the tracks, maybe four or five of the tracks, are spoken word. He's doing his uh, avant-garde poetry, which I do enjoy more than I used to. Uh, but all of the songs, I love all the songs. Ella Guru, Moonlight on Vermont, uh, Bill, Bill's Corpse, every, every song. Veteran, Veterans Day Poppy, the final song. Old Fart at Play. <laughs> and it was produced by Frank Zappa. So, And just like Ween, the first time I played this, I didn't really care for it. But it's one of those albums you need if you want to. You need to listen to more than once. All right, these are all, yep, yeah, still nine out of 10. <laughs> Paul McCartney, Egypt Station. I love the soap. The only thing is, I think maybe like so many albums, it's maybe 10 minutes too long. Uh, I love, I don't know. Uh, happy with you. Uh, despite repeated warnings. Dominoes is one of my favorites. And the final song. Uh, well, then there's two bonus tracks, which I, that's maybe why. Like if the bonus, tra I like bonus tracks, but I'd prefer put them on another CD. Hunt You Down, Naked, and Sea Link. The Final song on the regular album is just amazing. So 9 out of 10. Yeah, number 4. I know Morris Gautreau is a big Sparks fan and he loves this album and so do I. I will give it a 10 out of 10, but it's number 4. Sparks, Hello Young Lovers. With uh, Dick Around, Perfume... Baby, baby, can I invade your country? Metaphor, waterproof, they're all just so good. Uh, yeah. So 
10 out of 10. Oh yeah, and there's the bonus track, uh, We Are The Clash. Now, the reason I have number three ahead of Sparks is because I've just, this is, this album has been in my life before Sparks in, uh, I guess, 1969. And I have played it hundreds of times and I play it probably at least every four to six weeks or more. Jefferson Airplane, my favorite Jefferson Airplane album, Volunteers. We Can Be Together, I love. I, well, I love all the songs, but Good Shepherd is just amazing. Really nice song. A hey Frederick, uh, you know, Grace Slick. Probably, possibly my favorite female singer. Uh, Eskimo Blue Day, and then the song itself, Volunteers. Okay. Now, these two albums, now this, I'm just talking about right now, today, right? Maybe in, in a few weeks or months, I'll have a different opinion, but I don't think I will. This band, you know, I, 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 blah, blah, blah. I've gotten to really love uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard and Wing. But this is another band I've just gotten into in the last few weeks. And I've become kind of obsessed with them. It's like I listen to music at night with headphones and I would play their music, their albums, 70% of the time. In fact, I was playing a King Gizzard album and I was enjoying it. And I was about one third of the way through and I took it out and I put in <laughs> this band's album because I couldn't wait. Uh, and I seriously, you know, right now, these two, well, this band is one of my favorite bands. They're right up there. There's the Beatles and Sparks. I'm starting to think I need to buy more of their albums. I've got, I think, five, six of their albums, including live. I'm, you know, I only have maybe 40% of their discography. But I absolutely love the studio albums. They're all 10 out of 10 for me. And I don't even know how to, to rank these two because I love them both the same, even though uh, they have a different lead singer. So number two at the moment is Cam, Future Days. Uh, Just, if anybody wants to check out Can, I would say check out the song, Future Days. Give it a couple of listens. Maybe the first time it'll be a bit too much for you. But it's, it's, uh, it's not too weird. It's a little weird, but not too weird. <laughs> uh, or Moonshake. That's another, like, a shorter song. It's only three minutes. Check that out somewhere on YouTube or Spotify. Uh, you know, like in the past, I used to talk about Sparks, not thinking anybody would check them out. And I've had dozens and dozens of people become fans of Sparks. So I'm hoping the same happens with this band, Can. So number two, with uh, the second singer, David, what's, what's his name? I always forget it. But I love both singers the very same. I was thinking there's no way that I would like the original singer as much, Mooney. I know his name. But Su Suzuki is it? Uh, but it's number two. Now this one, I think the first time I played it, and it's with the original singer, I, I did like it. It's not like I was put off by it, but I didn't like it as much as the later album of Cam. But on further listens, I just grew to love it more and more and more. And I think at the moment it is my favorite Can album. It is Monster Movie. And they do have, this is kind of known as their debut, although 
although they did another album before this, which I do have. And, but it was never released until the 80s. So this is considered their first album. And it is Monster Movie with uh, Mooney on vocals. And Mooney is loony. They're, they're kind of totally different singers, but in some ways they're kind of the same. They, they almost make up their own lyrics while the music's playing. It's, it's a, kind of a jam band. And, oh my God, the music, like on uh, You Do Right, this band was just so far ahead of their time. Uh, it, it's just amazing. Uh, so yeah, listen to You Do Right. It's a 20-minute song. Maybe just listen to the last half of it when they get into this jam. And it's, like I said, way ahead of its time. So that's it. That's my ranking. Whew. Thank you for watching and have a great day.